Okay, this is how to beef up your main filtering section on your basement, tweed basement, uh, to get an extra punch out of the base. Uh, well, I talked to some of my electronic friends last night, just randomly, and they said it would give extra punch, not knowing anything about Gerald Weber's modifications. I mean, you can't you can't argue with uh, a you know YouTube opinion. I mean, everybody likes that 1960 basement, and it's been beefed up. It has a lot of punch. It has more headroom, I think. So this is what you do. You take uh, now. This is all as per Gerald Weber. I learned this at his amp camp. Here's an extra ground wire that I ran through the grommet there. You can see I haven't attached it yet, but it's going to be the ground for this capacitor. And it, instead of these being in parallel now, which would have been 220s, which would give you 40 microfarads, and then they're grounded in the pan, this is uh, two, 220 microfarads by 350 volt, which actually gives you 700 volts of rating and it knocks it down to 120 because they're in series and you put these two I think they're 220k resistors here attached to both ends like that and I'm not exactly sure electronically my buddies told me last night you know this kind of evens out the flow here I'm not an electronic engineer that's for sure and then this, these three are not grounded. So these are all for the power tubes, these first three. So that Gerald and some other people feel that the ground for these should be over, way over here by the, the power transformer. So that's what this wire does. It runs all the way over to the main ground, chassis ground by the power transformer. And this is the only one that's still grounded to the pan. And this is for the preamp tubes. So I, I mentioned this last night to my electronic buddies, and they said, "Well, yeah, it could reduce some noise. You could pick up some 60 cycle, 60 cycle hum with these being all grounded together." And I, I can't remember exactly why Gerald does it that way, but uh, he just grounds these in one place, and this is grounded here, so it separates the grounds. And uh, that's pretty much this. It, 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 this will give it more uh, punch in the base, more clarity. Let's hope, anyway, because this was a real pain. I, you notice I put this, it's actually a piece of carpet mat. Um, on the other one, Gerald had some of this stuff, which he put here to protect. And he glued it there to protect uh, from the grounds, or from the positive touching here because we so said there's some positive back here since these are in series and uh, so that insulates that let's see what else um, got the ground wire which will go here this ground wire will have a little jump this will have a little jumper of a ground wire from there to here so it'll be a little black wire jumping this ground to this ground and so these these will be grounded here through that wire. And there was something else I was going to tell you. Um, well, let's just hope uh, these have been laying around. I've had these caps for five years. They do have a shelf life, but they should be fine. I was going to say it is a pain. I put this carpet mat, carpet. Uh, well, I guess it's a mat for underneath the carpet, which has a rubber backing and felt. I glued that. To, oh, that's what I was going to tell you. Silicone. He glues all these in to keep them from vibrating with some silicone on the bottom of them. Because I tried to move the other ones, and they were solid. And he's just saying that you don't want these to vibrate. I guess they can become microphonic and pick up some, some sound. So, uh... He puts a bead of silicone underneath these, to, just also for safety to keep them from moving around at any time. So that's the last little trick, but uh, um, 
let's give it a shot and hope it works because I don't want to redo this. There's another trick on the standby switch which I uh, can't really flip it over and it's a little more complicated. You have to take this red wire where it attaches to the board. This is the one that's going to go first to the main filter. Where this attaches to the board you have to disconnect that, run a jumper from there from where you disconnect it on the board to the other side of the standby switch and what that does is when you flip the power on these charge up and these help charge everything else up when you flip the standby switch and, it, and it's supposed to take a little load off of your rectifier tube. In seven years I've burned up one a Muller GZ34 which is not much to I mean to get the extra punch if you look at all the mods that Cesar Diaz did to Stevie Ray Vaughn's amps to make them as clean as possible they would he would have oven mitts to change the power tubes every hour or two or whatever on break or during the show because he put such a load on those power tubes to get them as clean as possible that uh, you know, they warm out. They they went through a set of tubes at night, I think. So, yeah, to get an amp, to make something sound like the pros out there, you're going to spend a lot of money uh, wearing out tubes. And I mean, Hendrix had the same thing. He he wore out tubes every night. I, th I think I read someplace where they changed them once a week. So, you know, there is a cost to all these these mods to get your amp to sound cleaner and then I, I think Caesar put in a bigger I think a twin or just a bigger power I mean output transformer did all kinds of things to, to beef those up put in a solid rectifier instead of a tube rectifier solid state so hopefully uh, if you ever feel like messing around we'll see how this works I'm gonna start posting videos a little later but it's going to take me another hour or so to finish this. Talk to you later.